uh, gee, it's kind of a boring uh, pre-story. I grew up in the suburbs of Chicago. I moved to New York City after college as a newspaper reporter forever and ever at the New York Daily News, which was Superman's paper. It's the one with the globe uh, down in the lobby. Uh, lost that job. <laughs> Went to a smaller paper. And it's there that I wrote the story about the subway incident that sort of launched the second half of my life. So do you mind uh, jumping into what happened with you and your son, Izzy, that sparked everything? Sure. Uh, so the story is simple. Our younger son started asking me and my husband if we would take him someplace he'd never been before and let him find his own way home on the subway. It was something he dearly, desperately wanted to do. Our older son, Maury, hadn't asked, so we hadn't thought about it before. Um, but when we had to think about, does it make sense to send a nine-year-old at the time on the subway, we decided, yes, he speaks the language, he can read a map, we're always on the subways, that's how we get around six million people, do it every day, safety in numbers, we decided, yes, one sunny Sunday, I took Izzy, then nine, to Bloomingdale's, just as a place to go. We hadn't been before. And I said, okay, today's the day. And I went one way, and he obviously went the other way. Otherwise, we wouldn't be talking about this. Uh, down into the subway for his adventure. Uh, talked to a male of the species when he was trying to find, like, is he going in the right direction? And like, yeah, Actually, he wasn't. <laughs> so the guy helped him. Uh, Izzy took the subway down, got out at 34th Street which is where the miracle um, used to happen. And then he came across town on a bus. And when he came into our apartment, he was like levitating off the ground because he was so proud and excited that he'd done it. He'd, you know, it, it's sort of like your first car ride or something. I mean, he just felt like he, he'd conquered the world and we felt very happy for him. Um, but I didn't think it was that big a deal. So I, I didn't write about it for a couple of months because it it wasn't um, you know it wasn't a publicity stunt it wasn't an experiment it was just something that he was ready to do and we were ready to let him but a couple months later when I didn't have a column to write and I was working at this paper called the New York Sun I said to my editor should I write about is he taking the subway she said yes I wrote why I let my nine year old ride the subway alone it appears in the paper on a Tuesday by Thursday I'm on the Today Show MSNBC Fox News and NPR uh, it just blew up. It was so wild. Yeah. I mean, you know, I was, that had never happened to me before. I've written thousands of columns. I wish that every one of them made, you know, headlines across the world, but uh, only one seems to be what people cared about. And that was it. So what was it like being on the receiving end of national media backlash like that? You know, it was, it's a long time ago now. I mean, the nine-year-old is now 21. Um, from what I recall, it was both exhilarating and then at some point I just sort of had a little breakdown <laughs> because there were so many people questioning my um, uh, judgment and my, you know, abilities as a mom. Uh, and, you know, it wasn't just that they were being so mean. They, it wasn't that. It was there's a little bit of superstition in everyone or certainly in me. And it felt like if you say, hey, you know, I'm not worried about the odds. My kids can do that. It's almost like you're jinxing something. And so I didn't, you know, then rather than just being afraid, I'm not afraid of strangers, but I was afraid of bad luck. <laughs> and so I just like, I can't talk about this anymore. I can't deal with this. And I said, you know, I've been thinking like, should I write a book? Should I do a blog? Whatever. And I said, no. And then somehow, and I don't know how, um, I, you know, I got my confidence back. But, it, you know, it, it wasn't like I had a huge, like, sustained, um, you know, fear factor to speak, uh, to, to bring up Joe Rogan. Um, it wasn't, it wasn't a, a big deal, but it was a trough. It was like dropping off and then climbing back out and going, no, I can, I can do this. And, and now it's, you know, it's long enough that I'm not, I, I mean, I still am always afraid that something terrible will happen, but not so afraid that I don't live my life and let my kids live theirs. Right. I was wondering because, you know, it's funny. I always, I always, I always think that, and I didn't hear you talk about it in any um, other interviews. I don't although talk about you might a lot. have. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I thought like that must be really hard for someone who who isn't in the public eye all the time to suddenly be in the media. You know, yeah. in in one instant, in, in overnight, be in the media all the time, and in not the best yeah. light either. I mean, I saw that Today Show interview where um, I think Anne <laughs> oh Curry brought on a parenting expert 
correct. You know, they mentioned that there'd be somebody talking about the Today Show producers were did their, you know, they were fair. They said, um, do you mind if we have a psychologist on to talk about what you did? And I was like, no, I don't care. But I didn't realize she'd be sitting on the couch with me saying, you did it wrong. And there are many other ways to do what you did and to simply set them on the subway. You know, why, what, how, how terrible. And, and uh, why didn't you go with them? I'm like, because the whole point was not to go with him. And she said, you could have done it in a safer way. And it's like, if I didn't think it was safe, I wouldn't have done it. I mean, that was the whole point. I think that we've just lost track of what is safe and what is not. We don't think anything is safe. I could understand people feeling like a subway ride is less safe than some other things. But to me, who's on the subway all the time, I, you know, I had a reality check. I have to say, the two things happened today. I, I gave a talk this morning at a school that were, uh, you know, why am I still shocked? It, it, uh, but nonetheless, I was shocked by them. One of them was a woman came up to me after my talk and said that, she had been with her daughter in the lobby of her doorman building um, in a really super safe, fancy neighborhood of New York, just south of Central Park. And um, she was talking to the doorman. The mom was talking to the doorman. So she gave her kid the key, eight-year-old, and said, you can go up to the, you know, go up the apartment and I'll meet you there in a few minutes. And another woman in the building, in the lobby there said, you're letting her take the elevator by herself. So, first of all, you can see why a subway ride would, would be shocking. If people are worried about in their own building, an eight-year-old just going up, and in, you can't even go in the wrong direction. It's just <laughs> vertical, right? You know, so, so that was just, like, talk about absolutely having lost our way in terms of what is dangerous and what is not. And then um, when, I, when I do my talk, one of the things I mention is that I'm – so many of the early interviews with me, there would come a time when the interviewer would ask, but Lenore, as if they were reluctant, but they couldn't wait to come in for the kill. But Lenore, how would you have felt if he never came home? And that was just the money shot. They were just, they were just eager to ask that question. And I don't think it was curiosity because I think they know exactly how it would feel. So it was just that was telling me that I was wrong. Why, why hadn't I thought about how terrible I'd feel if he didn't come home and therefore not let him do it? Because that would have been the right thing to do. And, um, and after the talk, a, a guy came up to me and he said, you won't believe it. But this morning when I was talking about coming to this talk and saying, I'm going to meet the lady who let her kid ride the subway by, by himself, the other mom said, oh, I would never do that. He said, yeah, I know, but I'm ready to give my kids some independence, like let him walk to school. And the other mom said, how would you feel if he never came home? I mean, how would she feel? It was, it was about a girl. How would you feel if she never came home? And the, the dad said, well, you know, of, of course, I'd be devastated, but I'm not thinking like that. And the mom said to him, I guess I just love my child more than you love yours. Oh, no. So that's that's just something to chew on. Really? is it, There's something that has equated more worry, more inflated worry. Like, how are you going to let her go up in the elevator by herself? As, as if you're more evolved and more concerned and a better person. And, and that's what I would like to walk us back from, the idea that inflated worry makes you um, a, a better human being. And a better parent. And a better parent. Yeah. yeah. Hey, everyone. Thanks so much for watching the episode. If you're interested in contributing to the conversation and supporting the show, there's two easy things you can do. One, click subscribe. And two, visit our Patreon page where you get exclusive access to the Exploring Minds community.